It's a great privilege to spend this moment with us and I've really, really been enjoying the presence of God since yesterday and since we've been here today, we've had the word of God already and I believe that God has something definite and specific to speak to us today. I mean, obviously, we have a short time to, to go, so I'm just, I'm just trying to work up my time on my head so that I can plan things properly. Now, everything I need is already on my slide. But it would be nice if you can open your Bible with me to Isaiah chapter 61. Obviously, you know that our theme for this weekend, Beauty for Arches, is from Isaiah chapter 61, verse 3. And what we're going to do is, I'm going to spill, split this teaching into two by the grace of God. Number one, we are going to look at the background to the book of Isaiah. Okay, so that we can lead up to that Isaiah chapter 61. And number two, we are then going by the grace of God to try and see how we can apply that to ourselves today. So that's what we're going to be doing today. And I will stop by the grace of God wherever time catches up with me. The first thing I'm going to do is, you remember what I said, we're going to do two things. Number one, we're going to look at the background. How did we get to Isaiah chapter 61 verse 3? And we're going to do that very, very quickly, don't worry. I don't intend to take too much time doing that. And then we'll see what God will have us apply that. You see, the thing is that you must understand the background of the Bible before you can start applying it. If you don't understand the background, you will misapply the scripture. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is the ministry of the prophet because Isaiah was a prophet. And I'm simply going to read 1 Peter chapter 1 verse, verses 10 to 12 because it gives, it gives us an insight, a general insight to what happened to the prophet. He said, of which salvation the prophet has have inquired and said diligently. So he was talking about our salvation. Okay. Now, what he was saying is this, God used the prophet to give us all this great prophecy. Uh, are you listening to me? Now, this is very, very important. You see, a prophet is one that God anoint, God anoint the prophet and put his word into their mouth and the prophet speak to their generation. Uh -huh. So Isaiah speak to his generation, Jeremiah speaks to his generation and they spoke to their generation. But the prophet, were, they were mindful of something. The prophet knew, and you need to understand this, the prophet knew that they were ministering much more than just for their generation. The prophet knew that he was saying something that was beyond them. That he was saying something that will outlive them. The prophet knew that he was saying something that is awaiting future fulfillment. The prophet knew it. The prophet knew that they are talking, number one, even concerning their people, the prophet knew they are saying something about their people that await future fulfillment. Let me give you an example. All of us know when we read this, the story of Daniel, the Bible says that Daniel understood by the book of prophet Jeremiah that Israel was going to be in exile for 70 years. And Daniel knew that that 70 year was over and Daniel started praying. In other words, the children of Israel knew something about the grace of God upon the prophet, that the prophet can speak into the future. In other words, this Isaiah prophecy was 70 years before, but Daniel was aware of that prophecy. Daniel was not only aware of the prophecy, Daniel took the prophecy very, 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 very seriously. Okay, he knew that the word of God will be fulfilled in his own time. Daniel knew that prophet Jeremiah said it will be fulfilled 70 years. Daniel knew 70 years and Daniel said it's going to happen and Daniel started praying. Let me ask you a question. Do you know what prophecy is being fulfilled now in the church, in your life, in your family? Do you know? You see, this is the thing. We must learn how to do warfare with prophecy. Unfortunately, most of us, what we know about prophecy are bad things. And there are so many bad and evil and wicked people that do wicked things in the name of prophecy. But the devil knows what he's doing because he wants to make sure that he makes us not to want prophecy. But the Bible says that we must do warfare by prophecy. You must understand prophecy. Uh-huh. Okay, so that is what the prophet knew. Listen to me. When I stand there to minister, I'll tell you what. I have a lot of teachers I love listening to. I love listening to mommy pastor. 
And then I love this thing to pass. <laughs> I'm looking this side. Of it. <laughs> but I'll tell you something, I love listening to myself. And I don't mean that braggingly, no, it's because I realize that what I speak is beyond me. I'm not here to tell you what I feel. I'm not here to tell you what I like. I'm not here to tell you what is convenient. I'm here to tell you the word of God. And if I believe that God is speaking through me, then I must listen to what God is saying through me. I'll tell you what, I'm my best fan. It's true. It's true. Now, I know people are different. I know a minister friend of mine who cannot listen to himself. I know. You know, people come to me and say, your English is not good. I know. When I was hearing it, I know. That's why some people don't like listening to themselves. I know all my fault. Where I use R for is and was for what. So, yeah. No, it's much more than that. It is the word. Now, this is the what this is what the prophet was mindful of. That they were handling something that is beyond them. Now let's read. Of which salvation the prophet have inquired and sighed diligently, who prophesied the grace that should come unto you, searching what or what manner of time the spirit of Christ which was in them did signify. In other words, the prophet knew that he was saying something. And they knew that this thing was going to happen in the future. And the prophet was trying to find out what is the spirit of the Lord saying? What is this all about? They saw this grace. They saw this glory. They saw this beauty. They saw this, this deliverance. They saw this power of God manifesting. And the, the prophet was so, they were so excited. Yes, they knew that some of the things we are going to say are going to happen in the nearest future. But they knew that some of them are going to happen in what they call the new age. The latter days. They knew that. They knew that there was coming a personality called the Messiah, whom we call the Christ. They knew that when the Christ comes, it will be the beginning of the new age. It will be the beginning of the last age. It will be the beginning of God doing a new thing. The prophet knew that. And they were so excited because this is the hope of Israel. This is what Israel has been waiting for. Listen to me, they've passed through exile upon exile they have been persecuted they have been killed they have been imprisoned they've been too all sorts they knew that something is coming and they were searching diligently when is this going to be now that was that was the ministry of the prophet generally now let's talk about prophet Isaiah in particular Isaiah prophesied to Judah now you need to understand that Israel was divided into two so Isaiah prophesied to the two southern tribe we call Judah next line please and Isaiah prophesied before Israel went into Babylonian exile you know the Babylonian exile was when Daniel and all the rest were taken into exile and actually Babylon invaded Israel up to five times I don't have time to go into that Isaiah ministered Ministry span all the five five kings of Israel. So Isaiah and and this is one of the things when you want to study the prophet. You know, so many people don't like studying prophecy because you feel that I don't understand. One of the key for you to study prophecy is ask yourself when you are going to study a prophet. When did, to whom did the prophet prophesy? Was it to the north or to the south, or was it to another nation apart from Israel? Number one. Number two. During the time of which king? Did the prophet word prophesy? And number three, was it before Babylon or after Babylon? Okay, and then you will have a background through which you can actually study the prophet. And number th the last thing there on the slide is that Prophet Amos, Hosea, and Micah, they were all the contemporary of Isaiah. So those are prophets that if you want to read other prophecy that gives you something along the line of what Isaiah was preaching, you can go there. Next slide, please. Now, we want to talk about, we are still talking about Isaiah. Isaiah, right, just, not just talking to, about him generally, Isaiah is somebody we can call a messianic prophet. Now, every single prophet has something to say about the Messiah, but Isaiah in particular. Now, John chapter 12, verses 37 to 41 tells you something that is interesting. The Lord Jesus was, I mean, 
John was writing by the Holy Spirit. He said, but though Jesus has done so many miracles before them, before the children of Israel, yet they believe him not. Okay, that is a simple uh, line of fact. Okay, Jesus did so many miracles, but they didn't believe him. But the next line is what I'm interested in. And the Spirit of God said that the saying of Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled. In other words, what we are seeing playing out now is basically fulfilling what Isaiah has said. And then, immediately after that, he said, because that Isaiah said again, and verse 41 said that this thing said Isaiah, when he saw his glory and spoke of him now this is very important he said isaiah saw his glory and isaiah spoke of him now you need to understand that that the spirit of prophecy christ jesus his very person his work is the spirit of prophecy that prophecy is all about him is someone listening to me in fact the scripture is about him he says that isaiah saw Isaiah saw many, 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 many years ago. Listen to me. Isaiah saw what is going to happen today. The prophet saw what was going to happen with Brexit and Syria and, and Russia and Iran and all this thing and Israel, all this thing that is happening now. They are in your Bible. The Bible says that you are not in darkness. The day should not take you by accident. Amen. Isaiah, the Bible says, Isaiah saw his glory. Isaiah saw. Wow. Isaiah saw his glory. And the Bible says that Isaiah saw his glory and Isaiah spoke of him. Remember, we are going to Isaiah 61. So Isaiah, when you read the prophet Isaiah, you will understand that in the Old Testament, only some have more material about Christ than the book of Isaiah. Isaiah has so many references to Jesus Christ. Isaiah is the most quoted Old Testament prophet in the New Testament. And it's interesting, the name Isaiah means Jehovah saves. What does that remind you? Next slide, please. It reminds you of the name Jesus. Isaiah means Jehovah has saved. Jesus means Jehovah is salvation. So there is a whole lot that we learn about Jesus in the book of Isaiah. I'm talking about Jesus. Now, I want to show you. Now, we've talked about the prophet. We talk about Isaiah as a prophet. I want to talk about the book. Now, whenever I finish, senior pastor will pick it up tomorrow. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, I want to talk about the book. Now, the book of Isaiah has been likened to a little Bible. Because the book of Isaiah actually mirrored the whole Bible itself. How many books are there in the Bible? 66. How many chapters are in the book of Isaiah? 66. And the Bible is divided into two. And as the book of Isaiah is exactly divided into two. And it's divided into two chapters, 39 chapters and 27 chapters that correspond exactly to the very two books of the Bible. Just like the Bible was divided. The Old Testament and New Testament, the book of Isaiah also is divided into the Old and New Testament. The interesting part, part here is that when you look at the second part, the, the 27 last chapter, you will understand that even in the book of Isaiah, it started with the ministry of, of John the Baptist in the book of Isaiah, and it ended with the new heaven and the new earth in the book of Isaiah. So when you look at the message, of the book of Isaiah, you will see that Isaiah was prophesying to them the fall of Judah and Jerusalem. And Isaiah was saying, you guys, God gave you a covenant. God called you to be a light unto the world. And you have ignored God. You have sinned against God. You have failed to repent. And Judah is going to fall. By this time, by the way, the ten northern kingdom was gone. I don't have time to talk about that. But Isaiah was prophesying to these people. And they wouldn't listen. So when you look through, so it, it warned them about their fall. It warned them the fact that they are going to go into exile if they don't listen. That this is exactly what is happening to this is exactly what will happen to them, and that is exactly what happened. But you know, one of the curious things, and this is what I'm, 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 I'm saying. One of the curious things is that Isaiah was prophesying, and this was 150 years before the time, and Isaiah mentioned a gentile king, and he mentioned him by name Cyrus. Someone this to me. And he says, Cyrus, my servant. I mean, God called a Gentile king by name, exactly by name, 150 years before he was even born. And God called him by name and said, This guy is going to be my servant. Someone listening to me. 
It's going to be massive. And during this time, by the way, the Babylon, the Babylonian was still so strong. I mean, nobody knew they would ever fall. But let me tell you something here. I'm going to digress. Let me tell you something here. No, every single civilization, no matter their power, their glory, they always rise and fall. Is somebody listening to me? If it is a human civilization, I don't. It doesn't matter whether they are Germany or Britain. You know, there was a time when they said that 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 Britain rules the world. Nobody knew that the British Empire was ever going to fall. No, they, they used to say that the sun doesn't set upon the British Empire. Not, not this, and not it very well. Everything that is human always rise and fall. There's nothing that is permanent in this world. The only thing that is permanent is the things of heaven. Let me go ahead of myself here. That is why when God bless you, he doesn't put the blessing here. Your blessing is in the heavenly places. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? God doesn't deposit your blessing here. If God put them here, they will be corrupted. They will be stolen. But God put your blessing in heavenly places. And that's the problem. You must learn how to download what you need for now. Mm. Is someone listening to me? We are talking about beauty for arches. You must learn how to download. There must be a conversion. Are you listening to me? If my brother called me from home and said, Mom, my mom needs some, some bag of rice. I don't send, send bag of rice from here. I send money. Many, many, many. And in fact, even the money, I don't send paper money. We send it in law to Nikali. You press, you press the button here. And, and he sent me a WhatsApp. I said, I seen it. <laughs> and then he had to go to his bank and collect what? A raw cash. But my mom doesn't want raw cash. What my mom wants is a bag of rice. But what I send is electronic money. My brother converted it to cash and he took it to the uh, rice woman or rice man, is any one of them. And then he got the rice and he took the rice to my mom. And that's exactly what we have to do. You want this, you want that, you want this. Listen to me, whatever you want is in Christ. Amen. And you and I have to know how to download. And I'm, I'm going ahead of myself. The way to download it is not by complaining about it. No. It's not by saying, God didn't just give me God. 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 <laughs> No, 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 that's not. The Bible says, for we are saved by grace through faith. Now, grace, oh God, I've just messed up my slide now. Grace is the totality of the provision of God. Faith is the way you tap into it. And I'm going to repeat it again. God is only going to give you what you need now. Amen. You know, it's kind of like if I am, I am the richest man in the world. I mean, I'm, I'm not Amen. too smart to be. Okay, fair enough. Let's say I'm the big gate of this world and I have millions, but I, my, my children don't need millions now. They are going to mess up. I'm going to mess up their life if I give them millions now. So what do I do? I give them what I think they need. I put it into a trust. I put it into a trust fund and I put limitation on it and say they must not get anything out of it until they are 21. Is somebody listening to me? And that even then they must have done this and this and this before they get it. And number three, they must get the money for this and this and this reason. That way they will they will not just sit down there and say, I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to wait for my dad's money. And that's the way God has blessed us. This is what we need to understand. Thanks be unto God who has blessed us with all spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And Isaiah mentioned about Cyrus. And Cyrus was the leader of the Medio-Persian Empire. And it was Cyrus that brought them back home. It was Cyrus that gave them the beauty for the ashes. It was Cyrus that gave the decree and said, let everybody return. And he didn't only tell them to return. He gave them substance. He gave them... He gave them substance for them to go back and repair the city and repair the temple. 
You know, it was not just the city that was destroyed, the temple was destroyed. He gave them what they needed. Listen to me. The Bible says that according as God has given us everything that is pertaining unto life and godliness, through these exceeding great promises, some of this nature, what you need is in the world. He has given us everything that is necessary, but we have to understand how to how to convert the heavenly coin into earthly means. Next slide, please. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach the good news unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the broken hearted, to proclaim liberty to the captive and the opening of prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn. Verse 3 is where our theme is. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the Spirit of heaviness, that they might be called the trees of righteousness, the plant of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Next slide, please. Now, I'm going to compare this to what happened in Luke chapter 4 verse 20 because the Lord Jesus Christ actually quoted that verse. But there's something curious here. Something very curious. And I've, I've put them side by side so that you can see. It. The Lord Jesus quoted the verse 1. He quoted the verse 2. But the verse 2 that he was quoting, he stopped in the middle of a sentence. Let me just read the verse 19 in Luke chapter 4. Chapter 4. He said to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Full stop. Now look at verse 2 of Isaiah chapter 61. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Jesus stopped the sentence in the middle of a sentence. Why? It's because at the day of the vengeance of God is for his second coming. Now, I don't have time to go into this now. This is one of the things you will see when you study the prophet, that they will, the prophet will talk about two, two, two things, two things that are going to happen at different era, and they will talk at them together. This was, this was what the prophet were trying to work out, which, what is what the Spirit of God saying? I mean, they, they are bringing all of this thing out, and they are wondering, we don't understand this, we are saying these things, some of them we understand, some of them we don't understand. But Jesus stopped in the middle. Because the day of the vengeance of the Lord is what is going to happen. This same thing happened in Joel. I don't have time to go there. Next time, please. So what I'm, what I'm saying is this. When you read the book of Isaiah. So Isaiah was dealing with a physical thing that is going to happen to them. He was talking about the ideal messianic deliverer. And the fact that God is going to deliver them from the Babylonian, you know, uh, captivity. But, when you now put it on in light of what I've been telling you, what you need to understand is that the prophet was not just talking about external deliverances. But he's talking about an inner walking that affects the soul. There was something greater and there was something deeper that God was trying to talk about, greater and deeper than what Isaiah and Israel was experiencing in that in in those days isaiah spoke greater things that than he knew you know sometimes when we talk about what we need from god and when we pray sometimes we pray about the external things and there's nothing wrong in that but i want you to understand that the most important thing about you and i are the things we don't say the internal things the bible the lord jesus said what will we profit a man if he gains the whole world and lose his own soul. He said, I would rather get into heaven with one eye than have two eyes and lose heaven. Okay? So, so when you talk about Old Testament prophecy, you have to frame it within the revelation and the reality of the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, what I've done in this slide is this. You can see that number two I have deemed number two because we are not dealing with number two. Actually, we are not dealing with number one either. But we are dealing with number three. But before I go to number three, I want you to understand something that also happens in the Bible a lot. One of the things you will realize that happens in the Bible is that the Bible can tell you something. Are you listening to me? The Bible can tell you something that the, the Bible... 
the Bible can tell you something, and the next verse it will tell you about the same thing, but with more detail. Like an onion layer. Is someone listening to me? So, the beauty for ashes, we are going to come over there in a second. So, verse 1 actually describes the state of Israel as somebody who is in prison. It's more this literally. So, the first thing that Isaiah described their situation as is somebody locked behind the bar. And it, it said that I've come, number one, to bind up the brokenhearted. Number two, to set at liberty the captive. And number three, the opening of prison to those that bound. Now, why are they broken hearted? It's because they are in prison. And if you are in prison, you are in captivity. You are going nowhere. You are surrounded, you are hedged in. You are not free. You are depressed. Mommy was telling us about that. All those things mommy was telling about is the character of people in prison. And it's true that one of the great things in prison is that you are not free. You are not free to go to where you want to go, to eat what you want to eat. You've lost your freedom. And that is what, that is what Isaiah was painting here. That when the Messiah will come, it will bind up the broken hearted. It will set at liberty the captive. It will open the prison door for those that are in prison. He said he's going to bring, give them what? Beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaven. <laughs> now, <laughs> verse 3 says that God appoints. Now, now, it is very, very important. Let me, let, me, let me go back because I need to... You don't need to go back. Just leave the slide on. He said God appoints to them that mourn in Zion to give. Now, the, the, the way he phrases there is, is just like if he said, you know, I will give you, in fact, I will... If he said, I'm going to give you a slap, or you say, I will give you, in fact, I will embarrass you with slap. Do you see what you've done there? You've used one verb... But you think that verb is not strong enough. I'm going to use another one. So when he said to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion to give them. In other words, the second group of people, you know the first group in verse 1, he used the word in prison. The second group, the second picture he gave is the, set, is the picture of mourning. Now when you mourn, what happened? He said beauty for ashes, oil of joy for mourning. And garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Now I'm talking about the verb he used there. And that verb means to set in place. To fix. When he say I'm going to give them. In other words I'm going to put something for them. That it will be set. It will be fixed. And nobody can move it. Nobody can displace it. He said to assign. To designate. To exchange. Now I want you to see something. Please give me the next slide. No, the last, yes, everything there. Now there's a picture there that you need to understand. Isaiah was painting a picture. Yesterday, Pastor Gil mentioned something about Tamar. When his stepbrother, her stepbrother violated her. In the land of Israel, when people mourn, the first thing they do is what? To share, tear their, their, their dress. And Isaiah was painting a picture and said, you know what, we are like people that are wearing this rag. When people mourn, they wear sackcloth. Please sit down. And look like mourning. But that's not the only thing that happened to them. The other thing is that they put ashes upon their head. I was thinking of bringing ashes, but because it was not Pastor Joe, I would have, if it's Pastor Joe, I would have brought proper ash. <laughs> <laughs> I 
That is what happened. You remember the story of Job. The story of David. Mordecai. When Mordecai heard that the instruction had been given that they are going to be killed, he tore his clothes. He put ashes upon himself. So that was happened. They put ashes. They are, he doesn't have too much hair. They are, their hair is all disheveled. And they put the garment on. And they are grooming. And he said, this is what Jesus did. Please follow me. He said, Jesus came. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. The first thing he did was he came and he gently smoothing the ashes out of his ears. Next slide, next slide please. And the next thing he did, please can you stand up? He removed Sakyot. It's not by power, it's not by might. But by my spirit said the Lord. What the third thing he did, he anointed his head with oil. Now, that is all the picture in what you've read. And I'm going to clarify it. No, that's fine. I'm not going to anoint you <laughs> properly. So he anointed his head with oil. And what was the next thing he did? You remember he's removed his sacrum. The next thing he did. And the next thing he did. Now, there's something you don't usually know. You know, he said beauty for ashes. But actually, the beauty there is not beauty powder, it's a tear. So, what Jesus did is after he's removed the ashes, he combed his hairs. And Jesus. So the word there, beauty, is talking about the crown. Beauty for ashes. And this is exactly what Jesus did in his death, burial, and resurrection. Him who knew no sin became sin for you, so that you through him will become the righteousness of God. I was crucified with Christ. It is no longer I that lives, but Christ that lives in me. If any woman, if any man be in Christ, is a new creature. All things have passed away. All things are become new. Please stand up with me, we must pray. I will call Senior Pastor to come and round up this for me. We will have to pray.